Well guys, it's time for another 4Runner update. This is a long overdue video. This is my daily driver. This is a 2006 Toyota 4Runner SR5 four-wheel drive, and it has the 4.7 liter V8. I bought it in December 2020 for $4,000. Got a really amazing deal from a friend of a friend. It needed a few things, updated all the maintenance, changed out some of the fluids, and uh, got rid of a pesky check engine light, and I was pretty much ready to rock and roll. Since I bought it, I've done quite a few maintenance items, a couple modifications, and wanted to go over some of those in this video. This is primarily gonna be a street driving video. We did upload an off-road video on this a couple months ago, but I didn't really go in depth talking about the suspension and the new updates. So I just put a two inch lift on here. It's the Dobinson's IMS lift. Got it from Kyle Fogel at Tree Oak Off-Road. It was about 1500 bucks, about $2,000 installed. Uh, it took about three months to arrive, but you can see the teal coil spring right there. I went with a heavy load front spring setup, so that's the 100 to 220 pound uh, heavy duty springs to compensate for the ARB bumper up front. And then for the rear springs, I went with stock rake. So we've got a little bit of a higher rear end than the front end. And I did that because occasionally I do tow with this and I don't want to be squatting too much with a trailer behind. Uh, the rear springs are just medium duty, standard stock rake springs. Um, they're a little bit stiffer than OEM. This was only a two inch lift, but for my purposes, this is pretty much perfect. I have a ton of ground clearance now. And uh, I didn't really measure the actual amount that it lifted up the Forerunner. I feel like it's maybe a little bit more than two inches. It's hard to tell because on the stock suspension, the front end was sagging so much because of the extra weight from this air rebumper bumper that it probably lifted the front about three, three and a half inches and the rear about maybe two and a half inches, maybe a little bit more. But it looks great, it rides awesome. We'll take it on the road, talk about it some more. Otherwise, uh, what else have I been doing to this 4Runner? I put in a reverse camera, and I also did a double din Apple CarPlay head unit. I'm not really sure exactly what unit it is, it's just a Pioneer, uh, it's one of their newer ones. I'll put the information to that in the description. That was about 800 bucks installed, I remember cartoons from high school. I was like, hey, I wonder if these guys are still in business. And they are, and they hooked me up. They did a good job. The only other maintenance item that I've done since our last video was I had new rear rotors and pads installed. Uh, they were getting pretty far down, and uh, it was time. I'm still running these Firestone Destination XT tires. These are 255-75R17s. Um, I love them. They're getting a little bit louder on the highway as they wear in but for the most part, they've been awesome performers. We'll talk a little bit more about those once we get on the road. So I've never had a vehicle with a lift before, and one of my main concerns was just loading height into this rear trunk area. I mostly use this 4Runner to take my mountain bike around to local trails. I'm always loading my bike in the back, and um, it's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Yes, it was definitely lower before the lift and uh, a little bit more practical, but Honestly, I haven't been any worse for wear and it's been just fine. Getting into the 4Runner has been a little bit of a challenge for my pregnant wife, but for me, it's just a little bit of an extra hop and uh, really not that big of a deal. I could always put the side steps back on here. I thought about doing rock rails or rock sliders, but I don't know, we'll see. I haven't been in a situation where I've needed them yet and I'd rather keep the weight down on this build and also just cost. And I do really like the clean look of the sides here without steps or rock rails. It's still pretty easy to get in and out of. So current mileage is 244,892 miles. Getting this Pioneer head unit installed was a really big deal to me because now I have Bluetooth audio, I have a reverse camera, and I have, of course, Apple CarPlay, which is just, that's really all I wanted out of a daily driver. I can also make phone calls from this, and there's a little um, little microphone right here that was installed so that it can hear my voice, which is great. It works really well. It works just pretty much like any OEM unit. You have a lot of really nice graphic EQ adjustments. Uh, it's actually improved the quality of the sound system quite a bit. And you know, you've got a bunch of settings in here. You can switch between screens really easily between Apple CarPlay and your music or whatever. I basically am just using the Apple CarPlay apps to play any satellite radio or Spotify or any of my own tracks, and that's been working out really well. All right, let's take the 4Runner for a drive, talk about this Dobinson's 
two inch lift. So I am still really happy with this Forerunner. I know the biggest question is probably, do you miss your Lexus GX460? A little bit, sometimes, but for me personally, guys, I'm driving new press cars every single day, and we're getting two press cars in a week, sometimes more. I don't need a nice, new, expensive car. For everyone else, I would probably recommend a GX460 over one of these, but I wanted something simple, a little bit older, this is super clean. It's actually got a little bit less rust underneath than my GX did. And that was pretty clean to begin with. I'm really, really happy with this 4Runner. I have just loved driving it uh, this year. It's got good power, incredible off-road capability, and on this new Dobbinson suspension, it rides really well too. It's a little bit stiffer than stock, definitely much more composed around corners. There's not as much nose dive under hard braking. Um, it's a stiffer setup but it's not too stiff. It's really well valved, it's really well adjusted. And uh, if you get the right setup, it will reward you with excellent ride quality, really nice performance. In some ways, it rides a lot better than a lot of performance off-road vehicles from the factory, which tend to be a little bit too stiff. And this is, strikes a really nice balance. It handles well, it rides really well off-road. We'll hit some dirt roads at the end of this video and show you guys what it's like over some rough stuff. But again, if you really want a nice off-road test and to see how this thing rides at high speed and low speed and rock crawling situations, check out that off-road video that I posted a couple months ago. On the road though, it's really well composed. Like I said, a little bit stiffer, but there's one compression and that's it. It really controls the body motions well from this 4Runner. Whereas before I was just bouncing all over the place with the stock suspension setup. So pretty bumpy entrance ramp here. You don't notice it. The suspension just smooths everything out beautifully. It took about 1,500 miles or so for it to all break in. And ever since then, it's just been awesome. It settled a little bit in all four corners. As it is, I'm really, really happy with this lift. It's a much more sophisticated suspension setup than I was expecting. I was thinking, you know, maybe it'll be a little bit floaty. It'll be a little bit too stiff. It's just kind of the perfect balance, and uh, Kyle was able to help me choose exactly what I needed, the right spring rates and everything, and that made a big difference. Uh, definitely would recommend working with him at Treaty Oak Off-Road. Again, no sponsorship, no deal. I paid in full for everything, uh, but um, definitely a, a good recommendation. And in the business, a lot of the GX guys went to him on the GXOR forums, and uh, I just kind of did the same thing because that was who I knew. Oh, and another thing you might notice, the exhaust is a little bit louder. Uh, the muffler from pretty much the axle back just fell off one day, and I just pulled it off, and uh, it pretty much just lost a single resonator. So overall, it's pretty quiet, but on full throttle, it just sounds like a vacuum cleaner, which is kind of fun, I guess. I did about three transmission drain and fills. Shifting performance has improved quite a bit. I'm not sure if the transmission fluid was ever serviced until I got it. It may have been once, but that's probably about it. It's much more willing to downshift at a moment's notice, not as jerky around town. I really like the torque from this 4.7 liter V8. It actually has a bit more torque or feels a little bit quicker and light throttle applications than my GX460 did. The 4Runner V8 is about 800 pounds lighter than the GX460. This one's probably more like 500 pounds lighter with the ARB bumper and everything on it. But still, it's a noticeable difference and uh, it drives pretty well. Still pulls. <laughs> this V8 is rated at 260 horsepower. Uh, someday maybe we'll throw some uh, some headers on here if they ever crack and get a little bit more power out of it. I thought about doing an exhaust after that rear muffler fell off, but I really enjoy this 4Runner as it is being pretty quiet. 
and uh, I don't want to deal with any drone on the highway and since this is kind of my daily driver and long distance cruiser I want to keep it pretty livable so let's do a quick brake test uh, show you guys how much less dive there is on hard braking it's still there but the braking performance is much improved. <laughs> so much air being moved, it's hilarious. I think probably my favorite thing about this 4Runner is just how effortlessly it handles everything that Michigan throws at it. We have some pretty gnarly potholes, some pretty gnarly weather here in Michigan at times, and it's not all the time. But when it happens, it is nice to be able to have something that can really take an impact or take a punch and uh, not really be phased or put out of sorts or damaged. One thing I do like about these Firestone tires is they rarely get rocks stuck in them. The, the tread grooves are so wide, the tread blocks are so wide that they pretty much stay quiet over dirt roads and uh, they do a really nice job giving you traction and bite everywhere else. I think they have a little bit more grip than the KO2s that my dad has on um, his FJ in the winter and in the wet. I'm sure that's probably because they're a slightly softer tire so we'll see how they wear in the long term but again I've only put about 4,000 miles on these tires. into a jump here not really <laughs> it is fun bombing around these back roads though yeah really my only complaint about this forerunner is that it makes it so difficult to turn off traction and stability control and the system as it sits is so intrusive that yeah it just beeps at you when you're whenever you try to have any type of fun the nannies are strong in this one and I, there are a couple ways around that there are a couple defeats that i've seen on youtube but for the most part it is what it is and that is one thing i miss about the gx 460 is i could just turn everything off at a moment's notice come to a stop hold the traction control button and uh, have a really nice four-wheel drive system to slide around in and that's not the case with this forerunner my fuel economy has definitely taken a hit after installing the lift probably lost maybe a mile per gallon or so I'm at averaging anywhere between 15 to 16 mpg combined, and that's with, that's with quite a bit of highway driving in there too. Um, I don't do a ton of short journeys in this 4Runner. Most of that is given to the press cars that I see on a weekly basis, just so I can get more drive time and seat time in them, and give you guys a better impression of what they're like to drive. Let's see if we can seek out some rougher dirt roads and hit some bumps in this thing. The handling with the suspension too is definitely a lot less sketchy. I can kind of chuck this into corners now and not feel like it's going to completely give up on me. The Dobbins and IMS setup is definitely a little bit rougher at lower speeds, but once you get up to speed, it works really well as kind of a, a higher speed setup. I haven't taken this out to the dunes yet, I definitely want to do that, but when I took it on the course at Hollyoaks Off-Road Park, it did really well. I hit a couple jumps, got some air, it never bottomed out. The spring rates are really well tuned for the weight of the vehicle and uh, the setup that I have on this right now. All right, hopefully they haven't graded this dirt road as well as they did all the others. I mean, it's great that they've been grading these roads, but for our testing purposes today, it's not super helpful. All right, we got some good washboarding here. I have OEM tire pressures and these Firestone Destination XTs, 32 PSI all the way around. Yeah, just 
nothing phases this forerunner. It doesn't care. some big bumps here one compression and it's done it's great it really distributes the load of harsh impacts well across the body and to the other suspension components I didn't need to install upper control arms I was able to get the alignment pretty on point the caster was a little bit low they recommend about four degrees and I was only able to get the alignment shop to do about degree and a half of caster but uh, that would be one reason why you might want to go for upper aftermarket upper control arms but as it sits with this Dobinson two inch lift with stock control arms it's perfectly fine got some bumps yeah this suspension setup really shines at high speed it's kind of fun actually the body motions it's almost a sporty driving experience <laughs> hard into the brakes chuck it in a little bit here So would I recommend one of these forerunners to someone who's maybe looking at this or a GX? I would. I think it's a fun vehicle to own. It's an enjoyable vehicle to drive. I always love getting into this and taking it out for a drive. This has been a little bit more of a spirited session in it today, which has been a lot of fun actually. They do a little bit of everything. Uh, they're not very fuel efficient, but they're pretty cheap to run. Pretty low cost otherwise. Very reliable if you keep it well maintained. An older forerunner like these fourth gens, um, you know, they're going to take a little bit more maintenance, a little bit more uh, of an involved ownership experience than any newer vehicle. That just kind of goes without saying with anything that's, you know, 15 years old or more. I think at this point, would I recommend this or a GX? I don't know. I really like the simplicity of this forerunner. There's less to go wrong. It doesn't have any air suspension, which. Uh, usually goes out in GX 470s and 460s it's pretty reliable pretty robust Lexus did a nice job uh, improving that and updating it to work for a long time my GX 460 never had any issues with the air suspension but one of the reasons why I bought this forerunner was just the overall simplicity of it and it seems like that has pretty much paid off it does require timing belt services every I think it's worth about 75,000 miles or so so I'll have to look at that at about 300,000 miles since the last service was done at 230. Other than that, I think oil changes, regular maintenance, keep the fluids fresh, um, grease your yokes and zerks on your drive shaft every 5,000 miles or so, and you're in pretty good shape. I'm super happy with everything that I've done to this 2006 Forerunner. I think, um, I mean, I don't really have too much else I wanted to do the, to this thing. I've always wanted an Apple CarPlay head unit so that I could just kind of modernize it and refresh the interior. Um, and the suspension is just about perfect for my needs. I don't think I need any more armor underneath, unless if I really take this out west for some major trip, but I don't see myself doing that anytime soon. If I do, I'll probably get a set of sliders, but other than that, I think it's pretty standard. All right, well, my GoPro battery just died, so we'll wrap up the video there. We'll finish this up on the iPhone. Let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see on this Forerunner, anything else, any other questions you have in the comments. Always glad to chime in more on my personal vehicles uh, with some of my personal experience. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Take care. So there's just something charming about a physical key too. Nothing wrong with that.
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.